So a classic challenge that comes while building Instagram or Google Photos is about quickly and efficiently serving and rendering a large number of thumbnails. In this video, we take a look at an ultimate hack that Dropbox used to very efficiently serve a large number of preview thumbnails by streaming the response from the servers using chunk transfer encoding. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year and a half now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue at all. Instead, a small focused group of 50 to 60 engineers will be brainstorming the systems and designing it together. This way, we build a very solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course is enrolled by 800 plus engineers spanning 12 cohorts and 12 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many, many, many more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The course is focused on building systems the way they are built in the real world. We will be focusing heavily on building the right intuition so that you are ready to build any and every system out there. We will be discussing the trade-offs of every single decision we make, just like how you do in your team. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toilet balancer to Crickbuzz's live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale. In all, we would be covering roughly 28 systems and the detailed curriculum split week by week can be found in the course page linked in the description down below. So, if you're looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course and the second one is the recorded offering. The live cohort based course happens once every two months and will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to learn and want to binge learn system design, I would recommend going you for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss the systems and its design live with me and the entire cohort. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhani.me slash masterclass. I repeat, arpitbhani.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I have also put the link of this course page in the description down below and I am looking forward to see you in my next cohort. So on Dropbox, we can upload photos, videos and other media objects. Right. And when we open that corresponding folder, what we see is we see series of photos over here. So they, what we typically see is we see thumbnails and when someone taps on it, we see the enlarged photo, right? So if you have hundreds of photos listed there, you would want to fetch, you need to fetch those explicit images from the backend, right? So how do you get that? You cannot just send your entire photo there because it would be too slow. Your, your photo might be 2 MB, 3 MB, 5 MB big, but your thumbnail can be 1 KB or 2 KB big. Right? So given that, you would first want to show a large number of thumbnails and then when user taps on it, you, see, you show them high quality picture. Right? So this is what is the very interesting challenge that comes in because now, imagine this, you are using this app, you are using Google Photos, you are using Dropbox and you are constantly scrolling to go to the photo of that particular time that you are hunting. And as you scroll, you would want to see every single photo's thumbnail so that you can make a decision ki, hey this is the photo that I want to open. You are not scrolling slow, you are scrolling very fast. Given that you would want this part to be as efficient as possible. So how do you go about it? Okay, before we jump into the solution, before we see what Dropbox did or how Dropbox solved this particular problem, assumption. The assumption here we are, uh, we are making an assumption that this is an like this is an old hack that Dropbox applied, but the solutioning is amazing, right? And it is happening over HTTP 1.1. The solutions that we discuss is specific to HTTP 1.1. If you are already using HTTP 2, the approach to solve this problem is very different, right? Because HTTP 2 by default supports what they try to build over HTTP 1.1, right? And other systems apart from Dropbox, what we can build through this is Google Photos, Instagram and Flickr. Wherever you see a lot of photos or videos that you need to scroll, you can leverage this particular system out there or this particular hack out there. Before we do that, why is this even a problem? Right? The answer is pretty simple. The answer is request queuing. So typically what happens is that any browser slash client that you are using, right, that has a limit. That has a limit 
on how many maximum concurrent TCP connection that it can create to a particular domain. This is what browser imposes so that people don't abuse their system. So the idea here is or the or the constraint here is if you are a client, if you are a mobile app or a browser at max, the request that you can make concurrent request is six. So what would happen is if you are making a lot of requests, all the requests would be initiated. They would be queued. Six would be picked. And then when any of one of them completes, the next one would be picked from the queue. Then when someone else gets complete, the next one gets picked up. Right. But at max, that would be six. Now this number varies from six to eight, depending on Chrome, Firefox, Safari. Everyone has different number, but there is some limit to that. So for example, let's say we have 60 photos of equal size and time to fetch one photo or any photo or any one photo is exactly the same. So when your browser fires, now let's say you're rendering that you got 60 image URLs, right? And you are loading it in the IMG tag. So what would happen is your browser would make 60 requests, one for each IMG tag to get the photo. Now when you're making 60 requests at that exact same time, what would happen? Six would be initiated, other 54 would be waiting. Then when one of those six gets completed, then one of those which are waiting gets picked up and gets executed, right? So if I assume that every uh, the time to fetch every photo or every thumbnail is exactly the same. It would happen first six would take place, then second six would go in, then third six would go in and so on and so forth. And finally from 55 to 68 would be making the request and you'll be rendering the photo. Right? Why? So here you see a lot of requests just being waiting to be executed. Right? That is where the problem is. So can we solve this problem? Can we somehow find a way to solve this particular problem? Again, just iterating back, this is an HTTP 1.1 based solution in HTTP 2. A lot of things have changed and a lot of other approaches can be used to solve this exact same problem. Right. Okay. So what's the solution? The solution is batching, but how do you batch? How do you batch those things? So key point to note that what we are dealing with is thumbnails. Thumbnails are small. Thumbnails are not one MB big. Thumbnails are few KB bigs at max, right? So what do you do is you expose an endpoint whose job is to do a thumbnail batch and in which it accepts paths which are comma separated path strings to those particular thumbnails. So for example, if you'd want to load thumbnail uh, uh, one, two, three and four, you take those path and pass it through this HTTP 1.1 REST endpoint that you are requesting for thumbnails of this four photos, right? The idea here is pretty simple. You made a bulk request. So instead of, so the idea is you might think, hey, but I'm adding it to IMG tag. No, you are not. In some API response, you would get all image URLs. This image URLs, you would use and basically pass it through this particular endpoint. From this endpoint, the job of this endpoint is it would make a call to the server server would get this image paths, all of this image paths and server would send you the actual image data in the response, right? But how, how does it do that? So first of all, thumbnails are small, right? So, and when we are transmitting the image, we can transmit the image in base 64 encoded form. So it's actually binary data, but the encoding that you are using is base 64 encoded, which means it makes it safer for us to transmit it in HTTP response, leverage, use it as a string if we would want to, right? And the response looks something like this. It's HTTP 1.1200. Okay. Content type is text plane. Transfer encoding is chunked. We'll look at this extremely important part, transfer encoding chunked. And then you have some image data. Now here, if you look at this, this is an image data of like here you can see a number zero and then data colon image slash jpeg base 64 and some bytes which is base 64 encoded string so the idea here is that you requested four images image one image two image three image four right so here what you are returning back is you are returning back for each of that image you are returning the base 64 encoded part of it. So in this one HTTP response, you are sending four images data, the actual image you are sending in a base 64 encoded form. Now this image can then be used by your client to render it at that particular place, right? So here 
you got a bef- you got a batch request from your client around four paths your server is going to your storage be it s3 be it any place it goes to the storage gets that image data right gets that actual image converts it into base64 it encodes it into base64 and then sends it back in this response but now here you can very clearly see that if i request let's say 10 images in batch i get this then you your server got the request then you are making calls then you are making 10 calls you are waiting you are making 10 parallel calls to s3 waiting for it to send you the response then you are encoding it putting it over here and then sending it back as a response it, it would be too slow and your response would be too big can you do something better this is where transfer encoding chunk comes in it's an extremely beautiful piece of wow uh, it's extremely beautiful piece of optimization supported natively by our browsers now now let's spend some time understanding what this is all about so transfer chunk encoding so if you are using http 1.1 this is a this is a massive massive feature when you are transferring large files right so to have your client understand that you would be sending response in chunks you have to pass this response header called transfer hyphen encoding chunk and the idea is the core idea behind transfer encoding chunk is like for example your server doesn't know how big the response is right so what typically happens is you send a request server computes the response server sends the response while sending the response the server knows how many bytes it has to send it sends the content length header in the response itself so that your client also knows that these many bytes are coming my way but there are cases where your server doesn't even know how many bytes it would need to send a classic case with images that we were talking about that you requested 10 images your server doesn't know how much how many bytes would it require right so that is where you use something called as chunk transfer the idea here is that instead of sending just one response to the client you send response in chunks as and when you are getting something you are sending it back to the client right and because you have specified your transfer encoding as chunk it means that in every response that your server is sending so here it's not that your client is sending the request and server is sending the response it's simple your client sent one request this one request that contains all the path right and now your server would be sending multiple responses to the client you'll say how is it even possible remember http connection is based on top of tcp right tcp connection is established if no one terminated the that connection server can send a response to the client over this correct which is where your client is not breaking the connection because your encoding is set to chunked your client would terminate the connection when it receives the termination chunk right so the idea here is your client send a get request with a lot of paths in it your server went to the storage to get as many images as it can and as and when it is getting image it is sending it is creating a chunk response out of it and sending it to the client right so for example in the first chunk response it got like it made let's say you requested for four image i1 i2 i3 i4 right and your server when it got this request it made four it created four threads and tried to fetch four images in parallel one of the thread responded which was i3 what server did is it created a chunked response and sent i3 to the client then server got i4 then server created another another chunked response and sent it over that exact same tcp connection to your client and then server got i1 and i2 so it put both of them in that one response and sent it back one server knows that hey it wanted to fetch four images it sent four images now its job is done so that's where your server would send a null response So it would send an HTTP response having the null byte in it, marking that your chunk transfer is now done, and now you can stop sending, or now your client can terminate the connection. Right? This is the idea. This is how chunk encoding works. Now here, you need support from your server. So every single, uh, so basically every single language that you are using supports partial streaming of responses to the server or to sorry to the client. right so in node js you do res dot send 
you can invoke res dot send as many times as you want and your server would keep sending the response to the client similarly with golang similarly with python using coroutines similarly with java as well every single server supports every single programming language supports a way to send chunk responses right because at the end it is just a tcp connection you can invoke send as many times as you want but depending on the framework that you are using you need to see how to do partial streaming of responses right once these images are received on the client or these responses are received on the client side so how how is every single response looking like every single response has like every response has multiple lines each line contains an index for example if i send request for t1 t2 t3 t4 image 1 image 2 image 3 image 4 i would send that hey for index 0 which is the first image this is the base 64 encoded thing for index 2 this is the base 64 encoded string right so when you get when your client receives a chunk when a client receives a partial http response what your client would do it would know that hey for this index this is the one so it will go to that corresponding img tag in that src attribute of it it would literally replace it by the way in case you don't know in src tag in src attribute of your img tag you can pass in an http url or any url you can pass in or you can literally pass in this base 64 data as this this format data colon image slash jpeg semicolon base 64 comma your base 64 encoded image and it would render that image as this right this is this is how you would be building this part if you are using app some minor things here or there would change but if overall the essence would remain the same that you are sending requests in bulk your server is fetching multiple images in parallel as and when it is getting this image it is creating this chunk response and sending it back to the client once all the images are sent then your server sends a null request or sorry it sends a null response your client then terminates the connection right now with this streaming that we just saw what's happening is we are preventing head of line blocking which means that even if i get request for 100 images my server is not waiting to get response from 100 images if it got response from 2 it would send 2 to the client it would got response from 4 it would send 4 to the client right this way what happens is you are not waiting for all of them to be fetched from your S3 or from your storage and then you compile one gigantic response and then send it back to the client. That is the power of chunked responses. With this chunking what is happening is even though your server doesn't know what's, what's going to be the total size of it, it does not have to buffer all the responses. It can send whatever it has handy, it is sending it as one HTTP response to the client back to back, back to back until all the things are done and then your server sends a null thing right amazing 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 simple optimization that you saw right using something that the specification says it has but not a lot of people are aware of it right so chunk transfer encoding is something that you can very easily try out on your local you don't need multiple servers to mimic this but you can very easily build this and see this in action Right. And I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to implement this, be it Node.js, be it Golang, pick your favorite language, implement this. You'll learn so much about your response, the importance of response headers, importance of request headers, how to build this particular service. Extremely simple, hardly take you two hours of your time to implement this. But again, urging you to implement this to get a much deeper and better understanding of this. Right. So yeah, that is it. That is it for this one. If you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. I post two in-depth engineering videos every week and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.